Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my four year plan for my PhD. So how I've set that up using a Gantt chart. I have a on paper version which is in my bullet journal. Obviously if you've been following me for a while you know that I use an A4 dotted bullet journal for my research diary. But I've also done a version in a PowerPoint table. So this is more for the digital people out there that I have access for you guys if you want to create your own. So you can either print it out and fill it in or you can fill it out digitally. So I've actually got an example of me doing mine in this video. So the video is as follows. First, I have my on paper version and I'm more so explain how the GAND works in terms of how I filled it in and what I expect to have going on for the next few years. And then I have the digital version, which is just me showing you how I filled it out and sort of a time lapse of me filling it in. I'll have timestamps for both linked down below, but I do feel like you kind of need to watch both to understand it. So I do recommend sticking around for both parts. I fully apologize about the audio today. Essentially my dishwasher is going off in the background. So you just have to kind of deal with that. And my mic that I said I ordered never arrived. So now I'm waiting for another one to come. But I use this A4 bullet journal to do all of my planning for my PhD. I just really like the creativity that goes into it in terms of you have a lot of freedom to make whatever spreads that you like, but at the same time you can get creative, you can do a bit of coloring and it is just kind of like nice and therapeutic. So anyways, let's get into the Gantt chart first of all. So this is basically the five years from 2019 to 2023 that I am pursuing my PhD. So what I did was I have all of the months along the top and I have all of the different years down here. And then I basically blocked off different times for different activities or different things that are going on so basically I put in yellow all of these kind of longer activities that are more taking away from my PhD in a sense so things that I need to kind of block off time for because they're not really flexible so I have starting off so that was the first six weeks we had a boot camp to kind of get everyone up to speed in my program and then I've got like classes here so from mid-January to mid-May and mid-September to mid-December I've got classes so this first year I'm actually taking classes but subsequent years I'm just going to be doing teaching activities or TAing. Then in this kind of orangey colour I've got analysis. My PhD is in computer science so it is relatively straightforward how things go in terms of you get some data, you do some analysis, some modelling and then it'll be time to be able to write things up. It's not like I need to do specific lab experiments necessarily, although there will be a point where I need to do a live user study. However, for the most part, it's possible to just analyze the data and do some models and then quickly go into the next phase. So I have this analysis phase part of December and part of January for 2020. And then red here is writing a paper about that analysis and that's something I've done already so I had my first paper submitted towards the end of February and then after that I took a little bit of a break so all these blue marks here are holidays and it is very important to make sure you are getting enough time off during your PhD so I do think it's worthwhile to kind of see how this best fits in what I kind of know is that my general structure is going to be going from analysis to writing a paper probably taking a break and then writing that up as a thesis chapter or part of a thesis chapter. So that's kind of the structure that I'm following. Obviously it changes, but in general, I think that's the structure we're gonna follow. So then this April, I have been doing a lot more analysis and now I'm in the process of writing up my second paper. After that, I'm actually taking part in this entrepreneurship course. So that's kind of a bit of a break from my specific PhD studies, but mostly it's gonna be focused on that. And then after that, I'm gonna be doing some writing up for my thesis. So you can see so far, this is where I've been writing up my literature review which I've talked about a fair bit on this channel whereas this is going to be writing up a main chapter which is pretty exciting. Then after that I expect to have some more analysis going on this summer. Actually during this time as well I'm going to be doing some data collection so that's probably something I need to add in up here because these are kind of things that are somewhat separate to my work but also have to be going on. So probably going to add that in so I'll be doing some more analysis in the summer, probably writing up another paper if I find something interesting and then doing some more writing up for my thesis and taking another holiday. So you can see this kind of pattern generally follows of analyzing data, building a paper around what I've found, if there is something interesting, obviously. Usually I'll have some sort of research question that I'm working on and then the analysis will be based around that. And then it'll be either writing up a chapter or part of a chapter or a holiday and vice versa. Then that's the general structure. Then you can see in the summer of my second full year, I suppose, I have an internship 
I don't know where I'm gonna be interning, but I know that I will be doing it at some point during the summer. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be those three months. So I did just put that in because the only other possibility is if it extends longer either side, but I'm pretty sure this is the structure we're going to be following. Apart from that, pretty much everything is the same as the previous year, except for obviously I'm just TAing and stuff like that. I'm not doing classes. You can see these kind of green marks as well that I have. These are conferences that I expect to attend as well, either with a paper that I've submitted or just in general. These are the main ones that I know for my field. And then you can see my final year does change quite a bit. Obviously this is kind of my final year. Ideally would like to finish in December, but I think it's more likely to be somewhere around here, which would be about three and a half years since I started in October. So basically it starts off somewhat similar to previous years. And then in the summer, we going to have a live user study which is going to be following marathon runners up until a marathon that takes place in October and then after out all of this time I will be writing my thesis the actual main kind of finished version and as well I'm gonna to have to do a lot of analysis and finishing up all of that so that's pretty much the expected plan for my PhD so far I know it can change, but I do think this is pretty much what's going to be going on. So I do feel like it's nice to have a visual representation of this. I think it's been really helpful so far to be able to look at this and really see where everything's going and knowing what I should be doing. It is just nice to have that idea of like how you expect things to go, especially with regards to building your papers and conferences and seeing where all of that fits. So knowing that, okay, I've got a conference that's important here, the deadline's somewhere here. So it's important that I'm doing analysis and working on a project before that so that I have something to submit if it's something that I want to do. So I just think it's been super beneficial. I hope that you think so as well. But just moving on so that you can see, I put these two pages together because I think they go really well together. So this is just a yearly overview of the general things that happen every year. So obviously I know of certain conferences, so I did just put in a little block of 13 by 13 for each month and then I'm able to fill in general deadlines, submissions for conferences or journals or the actual dates that the journal that the conferences typically happen and all of those things that typically go on, things like competitions, I can put all of that in here and then like not have to put everything on here but have a general understanding of these two together. So here you can see I have the Gantt chart in my sort of PowerPoint. So this is Keynote in Apple, but obviously this is just a PowerPoint slide and I'm gonna have it shared for you as a PowerPoint document. But basically this is just a really big table of all loads of tiny different, different cells. So I'm going to fill this out, show you how it works. So each of these in the month can kind of be thought of as like a week. I know obviously every month is slightly more than four weeks, but it's just like a general idea. So filling it out somewhat similarly to what I had before, I can fill, all I have to do to fill things in is select the cells that I want and then fill them in in whatever color. That's what I've got filled in there. And I'm gonna fill in all my classes were here. This I'm also gonna fill in in that green color. And it's just really easy to fill in super simple and it's also then obviously very easy to customize this or update it when you need to um, because it is pretty interchangeable so let me just continue filling this one in and then you'll be able to see how it looks all finished out.
Okay, so there you have it, my lovely filled out Gantt chart. Um, so I can hope you see how quick it was for me to fill this out. I'd say it took less than 10 minutes, obviously because I did already spend the time doing it out on paper first. But obviously it is customizable, it is possible to change this whenever I want to, which I like as well. So I'm going to have both the plain one and my filled in version available for you guys, just in case you want to have that kind of filled in options. Obviously, like if you want to even take things further, you could then add some borders around things and different things like that if you wanted to make things kind of pop a bit more. Um, that's also a possibility. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this looks and I kind of like the not too filled in kind of way. So everyone, that is it for this video. I really hope that it was helpful. I hope that you have some idea of how this might work for you. If you're gonna be trying out this sort of Gantt chart filling in process, then I would love to hear about it. If you use my template, then I would love if you would tag me on Instagram or send me a DM with your finished Gantt chart. Um, my Instagram handle is KiraXFeely, so I would love to see those versions. It would be really great. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to see more PhD and productivity-related content.